Hello, and welcome back to our um, event that we're doing, the show on uh, what blacks should be focusing on with this Restore America, uh, Restore Honor to America thing that is being pushed. Um, black folks got upset. If you heard the show yesterday, you know that a white guy um, did a rally on the 47th anniversary of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, and he had, he did it at the Lincoln Memorial. There were um, There's still a debate about how many people were there, but you basically, just like in 1960, um, in the 60s when Martin Luther King did his, you saw a sea of black uh, at this particular rally as expected, you saw a sea of white. And it was hard, you were hard pressed to even find little sprinkles of blacks, but they were there on the fringes and, and you know, mixed in. But, you know, you had some, some blacks uh, emailing and uh, commenting on the fact that, one, they disagree as to um, the fact that it was a, a white rally for white people in white America. Uh, they feel like it was all inclusive, um, that black folks just didn't understand. But, you know, that's what we're here for tonight, and we're going to help black folks understand. Um, as always, we're going to start you off with a poem, the one that was requested yesterday. They wanted to hear it. They hadn't heard it in a while and wanted to hear it again. So this one is for black teens, and um, it's called Always Say It Loud That You're Black and You're Proud. I became friends with a white girl. I thought this would be great, that we could become friends despite other people's hate. One day I bleached my hair so we both would look the same. She had a hard time pronouncing it, so I decided to change my name. My eyes are brown in color, and hers are very blue. She said that we were soulmates, but there was something that I must do. I begged my mom for contact as clear as the bluest sky. The I started talking differently, though I wasn't sure quite why. I thought I would fit in now that my looks had more appeal. But when she went to the master's house, she sent me to the field. That's one of the older ones um, that I did back in the 70s. And um, someone wanted to hear that one. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, for those that know my poetry, they have certain ones that they use as far as making the people up in their lives and um, where they are. So that one was called Always Say It Loud, uh, Be Black and You're Proud. That's for all those teens that feel like they got to have blonde hair and blue contact lenses and you know, talk like a white girl or talk like a, a white boy or whatever, which is really running rampant right about now. All right, let's get into it. May as well get started. Uh, Yesterday's show, we talked about the Constitution, and we talked about if you're going to restore and honor back to America, then you would have to, by definition, you would have to go back to a time when it had honor. And the only time that it actually had any honor was before white folks actually came here slaughtering Indians and taking over the land. So um, since that point where whites came and, and slaughtered the original black Indians, started taking over the eastern portion of the continent, and mind you, um, there were three sets of whites that hit the continent at roughly uh, the back-to-back, um, -back, if you will. Um, a lot of people think about the 
uh, whites from Britain coming and uh, taking over the East, while that is the most recent, if you will. The, remember that you also had the white cousins, if you will, the French that were hitting the the northern part of the continent, and you had the distant cousins as well, the Spaniards that were hitting the southern um, portions of the continent at the same time. So we, while the, the focus is often time in history on the British uh, invasion of the continent with the, from the east, Post, um, you do have to always um, understand that, and, and a lot of black folks that were emailing clearly did not know this because the things that they were saying um, let me know that they did not know the history of uh, how the continent, how you got Canada, how you got Mexico, um, and who. And for example, the, the, even the America itself, um, California, um, different places. Remember, before whites fought each other for this, uh, the, the control of the Negroes, the original Negroes on this land, they, uh, it was territories, the, the tribes and had different territories that they, just like any other being, natural being on the planet, there were areas where um, they had been named and, and were part of that um, tribe or that kingdom or, or uh, wherever you were in the world, it would have some name that meant something. It was a meaning to the different things that, places that were called. But, you had, um, for example, the Louisiana Territory, which uh, when we talk about honor, um, people mention different uh, events. And if you mention an event like the Louisiana Territory, well, we know that there was nothing honorable about that backroom sideways deal because you had the French invaders from the south that had slaughtered black folks, raped black women, enslaved black children in the south, southern part of the continent. And they basically stole land and sold this uh, stolen land to the British that were invading the eastern part of the territory. So you know that there was nothing to honor about it because they sold something that did not belong to them. And that has been the history of whites. Uh, you see them today um, <clears throat> taking over places, selling places, setting up governments, doing different things in places that do not belong to them. And so you, when we say stuff about history, we're not telling you something that is speculative. This is not only something that many blacks should know. It is something that is, one, well documented, and two, something that white people uh, in general already know. So you may have a couple of white generations now that don't pay much attention that may not know all of the aspects of it. But it's not too many people that each generation is not exposed to the fact that this land was stolen, which is dishonorable. Um, so you have these contradictions when you try to um, promote an image of honor and the country being built with honor. Well, no, you have to kind of step in there and chime in and say it was built with slavery. Therefore, it could not have been built with honor. And, you know, it's, there's this uh, need every generation to um, push this image of a 
America that just is not true. You can't have a country built on slavery and then claim that that country is also built on honor because the slave trade in itself was dishonorable. So, you know, it's, we know that people disagree and just out of emotion, and we know that they would like to believe the fairy tale and, you know, the fictitious stories that they have been fed. But bottom line is history shows you otherwise. And so we had a lot of, um, and for those of you that don't understand or, or have never experienced uh, hate mail, um, it's something we get all the time. But, you know, you have, even in the hate mail itself, you have people saying things that you know they're not um, being honest, even in their hate mail because they're talking about uh, how, you know, you're, telling, you're spewing all of these lies about America, and then in the same breath, they're saying, well, the Indians weren't doing anything with it anyway, so that's why we took it. Well, you just said that we were lying when we said that you, you stole it, you took it. Now you're telling in the same breath that, yes, you did take it, and that you took it because somebody wasn't doing anything with it. Well, you know, either way you look at it, one, you're admitting that we're, we're not lying on you, and two, you are actually proving yourself that your actions and intentions um, before the actions were dishonorable. So, you know, we, and, and we send them back a breakdown of their actual hate mail and, and show them exactly um, how ridiculous it is what they're saying. You're, you're contradicting yourself even in your hate mail. So um, with the main uh, mail that we got and the comments that we got was, of course, about the Constitution. And... While people admit that the writers of the Constitution were slave owners, were, you know, um, people who talked about freedom of the whites while enslaving the original people of this land and of the African continent, the island continent, the, all over the place, they still want to believe that these men were honorable. So when you break it down for them that you cannot be honorable and be a slave owner, it's not possible. The fact that you own or have taken ownership illegally of another person is a dishonorable act in itself. Therefore, it means you are a dishonorable person. So when you create this document saying that we want, as white people, our freedom from our, um, our, our elder or our, our grandparents and parent white people, we want to be free to do what we want to do, you are speaking of freedom on this side while at the same time saying, but we don't want to free uh, these people because these people deserve to be oppressed. They deserve to be, um, if without them, we can't build this dream place that we're, we're thinking of. So they literally make the, the, the contradictory, dishonorable decision that while we're fighting for our freedom, we're also fighting for the freedom to take someone else's freedom, <laughs> which, of course, as I tell you, 
is a dishonorable intent.